All right. So welcome everyone uh, to our workshop. We have a couple of announcements on behalf of Just Roots Farm. Um, we are going to have kitchen support hours, which is basically a time on Zoom that you can sign on and get any of your kitchen mysteries answered. Um, so the kitchen support hours, the next one that we have is on January 27th. It's from 12 to 1.30 p.m. on Zoom. And we really welcome you to come sign in. You can find the link on our website. And it's a really fun time where people just talk about what they're cooking or what questions they might have. Or maybe they want to try out making a new meal and want some advice and suggestions. So please use that. It's free and it's fun. Um, we'd love to see you there. We also have something that we offer um, for our Farm to Family program. Our, we do unboxing videos for a cohort that doesn't live here in Greenfield. So the boxes are prepared by World Farmers, an organization of um, migrant and refugee farmers in the state. And we still put out these videos that show people how to use the ingredients in their CSA every month or week, depending on the season. And we've opened those videos up to the general public. So you're going to see a lot of the same fruits and vegetables here in Greenfield, if you were in a CSA or if you shopped at the farmer's market as you would in these videos and they demonstrate how to cook. It's super fun and jam packed with knowledge, recipes and storage tips. Our next cooking workshop is on the 31st of January. So these ones have been going pretty fast and um, we would love to see you there. If you're just signing in, there's still tons of folks just just coming in the waiting room. So I'm going to ask while we wait for just another minute, go ahead and drop in the chat. If there's a meal that you love, but you're a little bit too nervous to make or feel intimidated by it, um, what is that meal that you would love to make, but you're, you don't feel prepared to do it or that you have the skills or resources to do it? And if you're not scared of cooking anything, if you're like, I'll take it all on, what is your greatest kitchen accomplishment? And you can go ahead and type that into the chat if you would like to. And maybe Lynette, you could read some of those aloud for us just so we could hear it. And then for folks who are here and ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting my Brussels sprouts. So I demoed a little bit for you to see. We're going to be cutting them really thin. And one of our members here had a question, could I do it in the food processor? You certainly could but you're not going to get the ribbons that we get if we hand slice it. You're just gonna get little cut up pieces and that's fine. You, you should do whatever is best for you, but I'll show you what I like to do for this salad. By the way, we have two recipes today and I'm starting with our Brussels sprout salad because I want that to marinate and soak in the dressing that we're gonna have it in to help break down the um, really cruciferous uh, Brussels sprouts so that those greens get a little more tender under the, with the balsamic vinegar. And then we'll move on to our um, lovely potato latkes. Lynette, do you mind reading off some of those um, things folks have shared in the chat about their, their recipes that they, their accomplishments or things they're nervous about? Somebody said bread. Um, I can't see it. I don't know how to pronounce that. Ratatouille, probably. Yes. <laughs> and yes, yeah, ratatouille. <laughs> it's Jerry and Andy. <laughs> Hi. So ratatouille, Lynette, is a dish. And for folks who don't know that um, you, it's a great way to use zucchini. Um, and you can, you basically make these adorable little layers of um tomato and zucchini and there's onion in it and um, it's just such a good good little treat you can there's also a movie about a, um, a, a mouse that uh, called ratatouille that I highly suggest watching if you have kiddos or even if you don't so folks just really quick I'm going to show you what I'm doing here I'm leaving this sort of but end, that is too hard to use for the salad. If I was cooking these, oven roasting them, something like that, I would I would include this little butt end of the Brussels sprout, but because I'm not, I'm going to chop as close as I can to that end 
and some of this is not going to be utilized and that's okay. And so I'm go I'm going to go through and um, continue chopping all of my Brussels sprouts. Have any other replies come in about dishes people are nervous to make or something that it was a kitchen feat? Dana, it's scared to make bread. To make bread. Yeah. Maybe we could do a little bread making um, cooking class or sometime soon. I think that would be really fun because there's so many different types of bread and some are easy and some are hard. Yeah, bread bread is a tricky one. Anything that like involves um, yeast and, and having to wait it out, you've seen on online, I'm sure so many, so many um, bread gone wrong. Yeah, yeast scares me too. Until I start, I just started brewing a little bit and it's been, um, yeast is, is actually pretty more manageable than you'd think. So folks, other options, if you didn't want to cut or use um, your food processor to process these, is you could use the, the thickest setting on like a cheese grater. You could always run the Brussels sprouts down that. I think it's a little more work than just chopping it, so I'm just going to stick with chopping. And we are going to do um, pretty much all the Brussels sprouts that came in your um, in your kit this week. Um, it's about four cups when it's cut up. Let me help. What'd you say, Lena? No, no, it's Valentina. Oh, okay. Talking to your kiddo. Okay. So I'm just going to keep moving through these. And yeah, one of my favorite things, I combining balsamic vinegar with Brussels sprouts, it just happens to be like the tastiest, whether you're oven roasting, pan frying, or having it fresh in the salad. And if you haven't done much with Brussels sprouts in the oven before, they are so simple to make really delicious. I just cut them in half and you can put them just like this, face side down or up really, but I like to do down and get some olive oil, balsamic vinegar, some salt and pepper and roast those. And it's just absolutely incredible. Great use for Brussels sprouts. And something I learned through the hard way of farming is that when you plant Brussels sprouts, you don't actually get these little heads the first year you plant them. So it's kind of a crop that you have to be patient it overwinters, and then you, you get the crop the following spring. Lynette, it looks like someone else is in the waiting room. And um, yeah, so if you're coming in late right now, we are just chopping up our Brussels sprouts for the Brussels sprout salad, making them as thin as we can with the knife, but you know, at a manageable pace. You don't want to go super slow because we've got two recipes today. Patricia has a question. She asks, do we, do we cut the Brussels sprouts side to side or top? bottom? Mm, that's a good question. I'm going from top to bottom for this dish because I want to, it seems easier to me to avoid this bottom stem that we do not want. So it's easier for me to go top to bottom, but you could certainly, I'll show you going side to side too. The only thing is now I have to worry about either you chop off the bottom first. Yeah, or you could do that. Just make sure you don't include that little thick stemmy section. So you could do both. It looks pretty both ways. It's just a gorgeous plant when it gets chopped up. And you can always cut this recipe in half if you're like, I don't know if my family's gonna like this. They might not like raw Brussels sprout salad. Then let's cut the recipe in half at all the directions that, that we mentioned and maybe try doing a pan fry or an oven, um, oven roast as well. You could do that. I think this, this recipe really having apple in it really balances the tartness of the um, balsamic vinegar and really just makes it a nice, crunchy, refreshing, delicious salad. And the nuts help balance um, some of that too. 
Nicole said, if you don't like the bracelets rolling, you can cut in half first and then slide. Oh, thanks for the tip. Yeah, and my sister always peels the, we, we found this out when I was visiting over Thanksgiving, always peels off the outer skins. I always use them. It doesn't really matter, whatever you prefer. I think with vegetables that are not grown organically, I would suggest doing that because that's where most of the pesticide residual would be. <clears throat> um, Lynette, can you email the recipe to wh whomever just wrote in the um, chat? Okay. Thank you. And so if uh, it seems like someone doesn't have the recipe, so I'm just going to share what we are making. We're making a um, a raw Brussels sprout salad, and you're we're using uh, mustard, balsamic vinegar, some kind of nut or seed, salt and pepper, and shallots um, to flavor it. And just because those are the ingredients we have for this salad doesn't mean that it has to stop there. There are a number of things that I imagine you could add to it that would be super delicious. For one, I brought out some red cabbage that I need to use, and I love the idea of using it because it's going to taste similar to Brussels sprouts, but it's just going to add a different color. So it's going to make a beautiful addition. And even a lighter green cabbage will make a different color. And so for this, I would just chop it up and add it there. And once you make a salad like this, you can do it again and again with a bunch of different um, vegetables. So yeah, that looks gorgeous. Okay. If you're ahead of me and you're like, I use the food processor, I'm already done. Um, you, we can go on and matchstick our apples. So we're gonna try to cut those down really small into little matchsticks. And I will demo how to do that for those of you who need a little extra assistance. I just have a couple more Brussels sprouts. And I'm gonna be quiet so I can focus on cutting. Okay. All right. So I'm at just from my eye about four cups of Brussels sprouts. It's a nice big bowl. Looks like we have someone else in the waiting room. And I'm going to now start on my apples. Okay. So I'm going to use the whole apple. If you're not a big apple fan, which I don't know who isn't, you don't need to do that. But um, I would suggest using the whole thing. That's going to bring a lot of sweetness. And I'm cutting it into maybe a half inch, um, half inch slices. And Lynette, there's someone in the waiting room. Okay. And so we don't want to include the seeds, obviously. Um, they, it's okay to eat the seeds, but after a long, long term, if you eat a lot of them, there's, there's arsenic in them, so you don't want to eat that too, too much. Okay, so I got off as much as I could from the apple, the rest will go to my chickens. And then make sure if you did slice into any of the seed that you want to get that core that can be a little bit tough out of your apple. There's a million ways to cut it, but. Okay. And so now I'm gonna do thin, long cuts. As thin as I can go without being painstaking. So they're almost translucent the way I'm doing them. Um, someone else in the waiting room, I'll get it. There you go. I got a full house tonight. Welcome to anyone who came in a little bit later this evening. We're getting started with our Brussels sprout salad. And I just keep saying I need to update it. And if you guys, if anyone has any questions so far, please go ahead and ask. So I'm adding my apples into the salad.
And I leave the skins on. The skins have the fiber that I want. Um, so you're welcome to peel your apples if you have trouble digesting that fiber, but uh, otherwise I'd say leave it on. A, a lot of the nutrients of the apple and most fruits and vegetables are in the skins. A lot of the microorganisms too that we need to help digest these foods. And if, again, going back to the organic thing, if I didn't think that my produce was grown in a way that was healthy for me because of pesticides, I would probably remove the skins and, um, you know, as always, give it a good wash just to make sure that you're protecting yourself from any chemicals that you don't need to be ingesting. So I'm match sticking. Kind of looking like that. Hopefully you guys can see. Yep. And I'm just dropping it all into a bowl, the same bowl that I had my Brussels sprouts in. So if you're just joining, we um, shaved our Brussels sprouts with a knife, a cheese grater, or if you need to do it real quick, you can do it with a food processor. Um, and we've got, we're working on our apples now. And in a moment, we're gonna make the dressing that goes on it and everything will soak while we make our potato latkes. <laughs> Seems like we need to do a bread making class for farm to family. That would be really fun. <laughs> do you peel the apples? I don't think she did, no. Nope, um, we, what I was just saying is I don't peel the apples. You can peel the apples, but for me, most of the nutrients that I want and the fiber is in the skin. So I always leave the skin um, and um, yeah, so I would say don't peel it unless you have trouble digesting the fiber. I'm not one for peeling many vegetables, though, so that's up to you. Okay, I'm almost done with my apple. Let me know if you need me to slow down, anyone. You can let Lynette know, and Lynette will let me know. Did we just get a comment, another comment, Lynette, in the chat? No. Okay. Oh, church. Good. Paula. So Did someone say something about hala, the, the bread hala? I have a question. Does anyone know how, how we would roast the bracelet parts if we don't like them raw? Um, yes. Yeah, so a really good way to do it is just put your oven on at 350 or do it in a pan with a couple tablespoons of olive oil, maybe like a teaspoon or two of balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, <laughs> whirl it all up and either do it on your stove on medium high or medium, I would start on medium low for 10 minutes and then maybe move to medium high or do it in the oven for like 20, 25 minutes on 350. That would be my suggestion. And don't, don't forget, you can use the internet as your resource. So if you type in oven roasted or pan fried Brussels sprouts, a recipe will definitely come up for you. All right, folks, I'm moving on to getting our little sauce to drench this amazing salad mixture in. Um, I'm using a small bowl. We're not putting the shallot directly into the salad mix. We're actually going to add that a little bit later, but I'm gonna get my shallot ready. And if people haven't heard of shallots before, they're in the onion family or the allium family, and they have just a little bit different of a taste than onions. I kind of prefer them to onions in many dishes. And so it'll smell like an onion. It'll make your eyes water like an onion. Um, but they're really wonderful in salad dressings and when you're cooking things that you don't want to take away too much um, from, from the main dish flavors. Okay, so with our shallot, we're going to probably just do 
I'm going to do a little more than most people probably would, but you really only need about a tablespoon of shallot or, or even a teaspoon if it's minced really small, but we'll, we'll look at what that looks like depending on how small you get it minced. So I'm going to start off with real small. And I'm doing really thin cuts, so it's almost translucent because it's going to be raw. And you don't want any of the skin that's like papery. So I'm going to end up using half of my shallot. So I was wondering, I mean, sorry, I'm late. I've been, I was having ass issues, issues no. and, okay. and, and, and I wonder where you're at in the process. Okay, cool. Thanks for coming, Scully. We're glad to have you. It's been a while. So we are at the point that we are making our bustle sprout salad. There's two recipes this week. The first one, and we are using, we shaved our Brussels sprouts and you can do that with a knife. You can do it with a food processor. And then apple. Now we're at the point that we're making sort of the dressing that's going to get poured over the salad and then it's going to sit after that we'll start our latkes okay if you have more questions please go ahead and ask away okay right. i'm mincing a about a, half of a small shallot i don't want to use more than a tablespoon of shallot you could use anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon depending on how oniony you like your stuff Granted, this is a big bowl of Brussels sprout greens and apples, so you can use quite a bit. The, the key is to get it really small because you don't want any big bicycles of shallots. So I'm going to go through this pile a couple times and make it really, really tiny. And my eyes are watering now. All right, this feels pretty good to me. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see. So that's gonna go on the bottom of the bowl. I'd say I did just about a heap, a, a tablespoon, but you can do a teaspoon to a tablespoon. Really depends on how much you like onion shallot flavor. Okay. Next, I'm going to add my balsamic vinegar, and this actually brings a bit of sweetness and tartness to, to the dish. And we're going to do two, ta uh, two tablespoons of this. So I like to measure, but you don't have to. A tablespoon is usually like a glug and a half. There's one. And two. All right, and then we're also going to use Dijon mustard. Now, folks, if you finish making this dressing and you try it and you're like, it's not, I want more dressing on it, you're welcome to make more. Just use the same ratios and you can pour that over because, you know, some people may have gotten a little more Brussels sprouts or a bigger apple. So if it doesn't feel flavorful enough, you can definitely add more. And with the... Um, with our Dijon mustard, we're gonna do two teaspoons. So I might might measure, might just, let's see, it's a little tougher to do. Oh, I forgot these have a squirt. Don't make the same mistake as me. Okay, so that's one. Okay, and two. Indeed, said I says I think you're going a little too fast. Going a little bit too fast. Okay, cool. We will slow down. Thank you. All right. So while while we're waiting for folks to catch up, I'll re-talk us through um, this dressing. So we did one shot. You can mix mince your shallot don't do the whole thing unless it's a really small shallot um, you really just want somewhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon and that's dependent on your 
desire for that onion flavor in the salad, I did a full tablespoon and that feels good for me. Some people are sensitive to raw onion. Then I added in two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, this stuff, two tablespoons. And then I did two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. And so that's all sitting with the shallot. And the last step is to just do two um, tablespoons of olive oil. And you can use extra virgin or regular olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, use whatever you have. Okay, I'm going to give this a rinse. We're going to use this again for the next dish. All right, if anyone has any questions, you can totally unmute yourself and ask away. And we'll, we have plenty of time right now to, to get our um, batter made up for our latkes. We'll probably let you cook those on your own after the class. Um, but if we have time, we'll start cooking them together. So I'm doing my last step here, which is adding a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I have a little, e extra virgin. I probably don't have enough. <coughs> so I'll use regular olive oil too. Okay, so one tablespoon olive oil. And here's the second one. Okay, and you can whisk that together. You can use a fork. That works pretty well instead of dirtying up a big whisk. And folks, in the past, I have made this and added honey. So if your apple's not super sweet or you, you want the salad to be a little bit sweeter, honey goes so, so well with it. Um. If we don't have olive oil, can we use the vegetable oil in the kit? Absolutely. Yep. The vegetable oil is perfect. And some people even like that better because it's more mild. It's whatever you'd like to use. Totally up to you. And so I'm just now using my fork and I kind of want to blend that olive oil in with the balsamic. It tends to want to separate when you put it in. So if you stir it nice and quick, for a minute, it should blend up well. Okay, and once that's all stirred in, if if it's super thick, I would add in a little dash of water, um, but this looks like a pretty good consistency. Maybe I'll add in a little, little dash of water, like a fourth teaspoon of water. No need to do this stuff. Just help spread it. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to pour this over my salad and then I'm gonna to toss my salad and I'm just gonna put it to the side and we're gonna let it sit until we're ready to eat. So the longer this sits, the more the Brussels sprout greens and soften and the more that the um, taste in, is taken up into the greens. So I'm going to do a quick toss. Try to be careful not to get it all over the place. And folks, now you know how much, um, if you do want to make more of this recipe or more of this dressing for this recipe, use the same amounts as before. Two tablespoons of olive oil, or of olive oil two tablespoons of balsamic, um, and then You'll use um, two, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And then we're gonna use salt and pepper to taste. And we'll mix that in some more as well. Okay. So these are the last steps for our salad. Now, I'm gonna use one fourth of a teaspoon of salt. 
one fourth of <laughs> salt. You can always add more, or you could do even less and then taste it and see what you like. Everyone has different salt needs. And then I'm going to do, you know, a good couple squirts of black pepper or cranks from the probably less than an eighth of a teaspoon. And your last step. Oh, I forgot to mention that if folks, I wrote on the recipe that dried craisins or dried raisins, like dried cranberries, um, those make really good additions to the salad, along with gorgonzola cheese, feta cheese, blue cheese, um, cheese. Even if you cut up some like little chunks of cheddar cheese, you could get a little bit of calcium in there too. Maybe goat cheese. That would be super yummy. I'm I'm just keeping mine dairy free because I don't eat dairy. But we do want to add a little protein to it. So if you're recreating this recipe, you can use whatever seeds or nuts that you have on hand. So you may have sunflower seeds. I have pumpkin seeds or pepitas. Um, and basically you're going to use about a fourth of a cup. You could use more, you could use less. Um, and you can either leave them whole if they're small like this, like sunflowers, or you can even chop them up a little bit too. So I'm just going to give mine a rough chop. And that's just kind of using my hand to guide and keep them in place. But I am chopping those about in half. And then I'll sprinkle them in the sap. Is that, Brooke? Is that pumpkin seeds? This is pumpkin, but any seeds work. So if you have sunflower seeds, which everyone has in their kit, if you got a kit today, if you had sunflower seeds, if you had almonds, macadamia nuts, walnuts, um, pecans, anything like that would be super yummy. Even you could do peanuts. Whatever little bit of added protein is great. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what these look like now. Just a little bit chopped up. And I'm gonna spread those on top of the salad. So again, whatever seeds or nuts, and then if you wanted to add some dairy for a little extra calcium, you could certainly do that. You could use non-dairy cheese, or you could add um, gorgonzola, blue, goat cheese, whatever floats your boat, maybe a little bit of feta. Be super yummy with the salad. Some things that just smelling it that I start to think about, like using my senses, what else would be good in this? Like maybe you could do this with strawberries instead or raspberries if you had those as the fruit. Or maybe you use, if you had collard greens instead of Brussels sprouts, you cut them really thin. You could certainly do that as well. Um, there are so many different ways that you can take the ingredients of the salad and redo it. And that's kind of what I love about how simple it is. And again, if your apple's not so sweet, you can add some honey if you'd like. Someone said they're using cojita, Jenna. That's such a good idea. Yeah, love that. Cojita is a type of like soft, mild cheese. Okay, so my salad is good to go. <laughs> now it's just gonna sit for a while. And we're going to move on to our latkes. And I'm going to turn my phone screen. So if you get dizzy easily, close your eyes there so you can adjust to this. Now, I'm going to give everyone a, an extra minute to clean their workspaces because I cheated and I just got a second one set up right here. Um, and we'll talk kind of about latkes. So potato latkes like potato pancakes, it's a shredded potato and you press all the kind of extra liquids out of them and you basically just make it using eggs. Um, John, can you grab me two eggs? Yep. Forgot my eggs. We um, have chickens here, so we keep them out in a different fridge. So luckily I have someone to help. Um, but we're gonna use um, these potatoes and onions in this, traditional latke recipe and kind of the things that I love to do dip, dipping with it is 
applesauce, which everyone got in their kits. Um, you'd be surprised. It kind of sounds funny, like a fried potato and applesauce, but don't knock it until you try it. It's so good. Um, and then I also love doing oh. horseradish and sorry. Oh, my God, sakes. What a treat. Oh, I don't know. There we go. Thanks. Um, you can also do um, like a horseradish sour cream or a horseradish mayo dip. That's really good. When I was a kid, I always just ate them with ketchup and that's super yummy as well. Um, one thing I wanted to note that I did put in the recipe, so if anyone forgot it, they probably don't know this. Thank you so much. Is that you can make kind of fritters like latkes. I call them fritters too, with a ton of different vegetables. And you can make them like I could do carrot latkes and it, they could be all carrot or they could be carrot and potatoes, or you could use beets. I made beet fritters the other night using the same principle. So it's really going to be an interchangeable skill if you haven't done this before. One thing that is going to be helpful for you is either using paper towels or a clean towel or maybe a colander or strainer with like not super big of big holes or what I'm using something like cheesecloth which is basically like a dish towel that is a little bit thinner and once I have shredded my potatoes I'm going to put them into the dish towel and I'm going to squeeze out extra water. So that's what's about to happen. So I'm gonna get started on that. Now I already scrubbed my potatoes and I washed them. If you want to do that, you, you'll want to do that if you haven't, if they've got lots of dirt on them. And some folks might want to peel. I do not peel. Again, I really want all the nutrients that is in the skin to, for, to be digestion. I want that fiber to help me um, and uh, all the micro and macronutrients in the skin. So I'm not going to peel. If you wanted to peel, you could certainly, if you have a vegetable peeler, you can use that or you can use a knife and just very carefully peel off layers of the skin if you don't have a vegetable, vegetable peeler. So I can show that again if folks haven't seen it. I've got my thumb on top of a small knife and I'm pushing just below or under the skin. So those are things you can do if you want to peel. But right now I'm going to use a, a cheese grater. You can use a food processor. You just don't want to, you don't want it to turn to absolute mush. You want to kind of have some chunk to it. And I think graters are the best because it makes it nice and thin, but it's easy to work with to um, and you'll see why. So I'm going to use just a regular cheese grater on the largest setting. It gets a little messy. The cast iron pan good for cooking this? Can you say that again? Is a cast iron pan good for cooking the latkes? That's a great question. Yeah, cast irons are great. I'm using a nonstick pan. But if you don't, I've made them in cast irons so many times. Most of the time, we just got a new nonstick, so I want to use it. But um, yeah, nonstick pan, cast iron pan, those are great. Okay, so I'm shredding about one pound of potatoes, which is roughly going to be around two of your russets. We just grew these at Just Roots, so I... um. I've got quite a few of them to make, they're tiny, so I wanna make up to a pound. And then once I'm finished with the potato, I'm just gonna scoop those and put them onto your cloth um, or your dish towel or in a separate bowl just to be ready for us to um, squeeze the water out of later. Now, if anyone's struggling to figure out what they can use, um, if they don't have, uh, supplies that they think they need for this process, please speak up and we'll try to troubleshoot it together. I just saw Nicole's comment, we all need a John. It's so true. It's really, really lucky in a pinch like this. I don't have to leave all you guys and go out in the freezing cold to get eggs. Okay, so 
good to pay attention when you're doing this. I'm not paying attention, so I keep dropping it. You don't want to cut yourself on these things. <laughs> and when the piece gets too small, I always suggest just let it go. It's okay. And I can mute myself if this is too loud for everyone, but I'm going to keep doing this with the next five. And you can either use the same thing with your onion that you're going to use. You could use a cheese grater with it, or you could just cut it up um, into small pieces, whatever works for you. So if you're a step ahead, you can use the same process you use to shred the potatoes with the onions, or just cut them with a knife. But either way, you're going to want them nice and small like our potato is. <laughs> and one of my favorite things to add to latkes is um, uh, scallions or green onions. And sometimes I add like two whole scallions to one latke and almost make it like a scallion pancake. You can do this with sweet potato. We can do this with squash, like anything that you can get to shred like this, and it's going to be delicious. And for the folks who are a step ahead, you can also, you can begin heating your oil. Um, you can heat it on medium low, and you're going to fill up some cooking oil to about a fourth, <laughs> um, a fourth inch in the bottom of your pan. And we put cooking oil in there, even though it's like not, not seen as as healthy as olive oil or other oils, because it just works very well um, for frying things. And it also doesn't take away from the taste, which sometimes olive oil can be a bit intense or some other oils can. All right, I just got a couple of potatoes left. And then we still got 15 minutes, perfect. Now we don't like to do this process too far ahead of time because the potato starts to oxidize a little bit and it gets more slimy. So um, I suggest doing this kind of, I like cooking them fresh. I don't tend to make a big um, thing of potato batter. And, and then use it later, I, I do it fresh. And if you're really ahead of us, um, please do try to try to play with your own dipping sauces that you think might be good for this. Almost there. Certainly gives you a workout. Great. Okay. So now I've created a huge mass. That's all part of the fun. Okay, I'm just going to get my onions cut up. I'm gonna rinse my hands quick and then we'll put our onions in here and then we'll do our squeeze. <coughs> Great. So that's a connector, this good thing. Yeah. Que se conecto. Okay. Can we get a copy of the recording? Um. Yes, I think you can find it on YouTube. Yep. So, and not just find it on YouTube. Everyone who participates gets the recording sent to them. So, 
you will have that sent to you from Emily. Um, if you signed up for the class, it'll be automatically emailed. So you can look forward to that once we get it put up on our YouTube. We usually have it up um, by the following day. So I'm just gonna cut my onions nice and thin, and then I'll kind of dice them after that just to make them real small. And these provide so much flavor for the latkes. So it's a step I don't like to skip unless you have aversions to eating onions. If you didn't have fresh onion at home, you could always use onion powder. I've done that before too. Okay. And I had teensy tiny onions, so I'm gonna do two of them. Uh, Nicole has a, has a question. Also, can you shred the onions the same way as the potatoes? Absolutely, yep. So you can shred them. I can do that too. I'm just crying a bit too much right now. Um, you can certainly use them with the food processor. So you use the food processor um, and you can do it on a cheese grater if you use the cheese grater. Thanks for all these great questions tonight, everyone. Um, I'm really glad that people feel comfortable speaking up and asking their questions and please never, never stop doing that because odds are if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it too. Okay, so I'm gonna do that too with my onion. And if you can't get it all the way chopped like mine, you can use your knife to finish it off. Okay. All right, so you'll notice now that your potatoes are already starting to get like a little bit slimy and a lot of water. They get almost heavier, they're so wet. So I'm gonna tip the camera for a sec, or you might be able, yeah, you can still see on my, my um, overhead screen what I'm gonna be doing. So I'll leave the camera. What I'm gonna do is I have a cheesecloth, but do this in the best way that you can. I'm just gonna do something like this and I'm gonna squeeze out excess moisture over the sink. <laughs> Quite a bit is coming out. <laughs> And I would just do it until it's not like continuous drips when you squeeze it hard. And this helps make um, it more that's really crispy. If it's releasing water in the pan, it's not going to get as crisp. <coughs> okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But I squeezed pretty hard. I think I got a lot of the excess moisture out. So I'm gonna unwrap and then I'm gonna put it in a bowl that I can work the rest of the ingredients into. All right. And that will be go on the dishwasher. <coughs> Okay, so for the batter, um, if folks are trying to have dinner very soon, I would suggest pouring in um, one fourth, maybe a fourth inch into the bottom of your pan so that your um, latkes are at least like half submerged. So you can get that heat starting to heat. I might as well do it. And so I can show you here. Can you see on my screen? So about a fourth inch looks good to me. And then what we're gonna do is start making the batter. Okay, so we're gonna add two large eggs. You can just dump it right on top of the potatoes. Everything will get mixed. Okay, I'll give my hands a rinse. Uh, 
All right. We're going to do half of a cup of all purpose flour. I have gluten free flour because I can't eat gluten, but we'll do half a cup of whatever you got. And what I do is I kind of flatten it, but I don't push it down too hard. Half a cup. We're going to do one teaspoon of baking powder. And I'll go over these again. I'm just going to go through one staff and then we'll add them. I'll say them again. One teaspoon of baking powder. That's going to help them crisp up. One teaspoon of um, fine salt. If you have fine salt, if you have like thick, coarse salt, I would do two. But this is fine salt, so I'm going to do one. You can always, you're going to add more after they come off the fryer. You're going to sprinkle a little salt, so don't worry if it's a little bit under salted. And then we're going to do some pepper, and that's to taste, so do as much as you like. I'll do a little more. Okay, so going back over that, we have our two eggs went in with potatoes and onions. We did a half cup of some kind of flour. I did gluten-free, but all purpose is the best. Um, we did some salt and pepper, um, about a teaspoon of salt, I would say, a teaspoon of baking powder to help with the crunch, and um, that's it. And th that's how easy they can be. And don't forget, you can always add in whatever ingredients you really love, like carrots, beets, parsnips, all of those things can be part of your laka tradition. Um, it's a great way to get extra vegetables in. And then we're gonna give this a good stir. You can stir it by hand, which is kind of what I really like to do, or you can use a wooden spoon or whatever you've got. Now, if your mix is too dry, you can add water, um, or you can also add egg, more egg if you want to do that. But it shouldn't be runny. We don't want it to be runny. So if that's if it's runny, you would add in a little bit of more flour. And so, I've got my oil heating. Oh, I forgot to heat it. There we go. Oil's heating and I'm stirring my batter. When it comes to cook time, these cook for five minutes-ish on each side. And the best way to know is they're just gonna get golden brown on either side. So when it's golden brown, you can use the spatula to flip. And my suggestion is if you have paper towels at home or something you don't mind, like a clean dish towel, I like to set a paper towel on a piece of, uh, or on a, like a sheet pan or a plate. And then as these latkes are coming off, because I'm only going to do about three at a time with the size of my pan, as they come off, you can set them on the paper towels and that extra oil is going to drain. Um, now, folks might be curious about, well, how big do I make them? It's pretty neat because it doesn't matter. That's up to you. Sometimes it's easier to flip small ones. So maybe I would do like this much um, or even smaller you could do if you wanted to. <coughs> it's easier to, um, you know, if you, if you feel comfortable and you wanna make a big, big laka, you're welcome to do that. I find they stay to, together a little bit better when they're smaller. Um, if you're having trouble getting them to stick. Again, maybe just add a little bit of water. Um, other than that. Oh, I said that thicker is softer and thinner is crispier. Oh, that's that's great, Nicole. Yes, thicker is softer and, and kind of like bread-like and thinner is definitely crispier. Good point. 
Yeah. So now I'm I'm like curious to see what what people start exploring with making latkes or flip fritters, and what all you could put on them. Like you could do breakfast latkes and have some salmon with it, or um, or or with some eggs, make those potato pancakes and eggs. You could put like bacon inside of your latkes. Um, you <laughs> that's not very kosher. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not kosher, but you know, there's people <laughs> that are kosher too. So, but that's a point. Um, yeah, the applesauce is, is so nice. And I usually sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top of my, um, my applesauce, just because I think it tastes nice with the pancake. Yeah, we have a lot of folks who are not Jewish in our class, but um, I think you could substitute a different meat if you wanted to. I just, I don't know what the best one would be. Um, you could do sour cream with latkes. Yes, we talked about that earlier, sour cream. And mm -hmm. my hint is mix in a little horseradish if you have horseradish. It's so good. That's what we had growing up. Okay, folks, so I'm, I feel this consistency is perfect. I can, I can keep it in a ball when I turn my hands like this. I'm going to show that a little bit closer. So it's not, it's not breaking apart. It's wanting to form a ball. That to me is perfect and it's ready to cook. Now I'm going to drop it in the pan. And in the first like 15 seconds, I use my spatula and I press it down and I flatten it. And then you kind of have the spatula marks. And then you cook it for a few minutes on one side. I'm like, we'll keep ours at medium heat. If it starts to burn, turn it down to medium low. Everyone's stove is different. I have a gas stove or I have an electric stove. And then you'll, it'll, you'll know it's ready because it gets easy to flip. And then you can flip on the other side. So I wouldn't suggest you don't need to pre, um, push them down. You can just do that with a spatula in the bowl. I'm going to wash my hands really quick. And great. So everyone should feel ready um, to, to make their latkes and your Brussels sprout salad. I'm sure it's looking very delicious and beautiful. Um, those that'll be ready to eat when you're ready. If you want to save it for the next day, just make sure you get it in a tight Ziploc container. Um, these can be stored in, in regular Tupperware. You can store them in once they're cooked in um, uh, tin foil or aluminum foil, but I would suggest cooking them first and then storing them, not just storing the batter in the fridge. Does anyone have any questions? No questions? Well, I hope everyone enjoys theirs. I'm gonna get cooking. Hi. Sorry, Brooke, my question, it's Jerry. My question is, um, I wrote in the chat, is it okay to use a splatter guard over oh, your yeah. pan? Absolutely, it's okay. great. Anytime you wanna use a splatter guard, I say yes. Just, um, you're really, this is a great dish for it too, because you don't have to move move it around very much just wants to flip it so absolutely hi jerry it's nice to talk to you all right so i'm dropping mine in and they're just starting to bubble all right happy holidays jenna happy holidays everyone i'm going to stay on for just a couple minutes in case people have questions but happy holidays, everyone. Happy, holidays. happy holidays happy holidays happy holidays